Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jonathan Fisher. Well, the last 18 months have witnessed an amazing, probably unprecedented amount of change in the world in general and in business and sales in particular. And uh, it's been crazy. The introduction of technologies like AI, the COVID-based accelerated shift toward remote work, but a lot going on. So what have we learned? And what are the things that are actually working right now in sales? We're coming hard on the final quarter of the year. How can we level up our game and figure out how to finish strong with what's actually working right now in the real world? Well, we have a fantastic panel of guests to help us talk about this here today, leading it off with James Buckley. Now, James is known as James Say What Sales Buckley. The guy has been a force to be reckoned with when it comes to thought leadership, sales training, and he's helped probably literally thousands of salespeople around the globe level up their game. He's a podcast host himself. He's uh, the chief evangelist for JB Sales. Uh, James is also a really great friend and a fantastic guy to have on here and to know. And uh, we're glad to have you as part of the conversation today. James Buckley, welcome, my brother. Yes, good to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is exciting because I get to hang out with cool friends and drop great value for salespeople all over the place. So if you're tuning in, buckle in because this is going to be a good time. <laughs> right on, right on. And next up, we've got Kevin Hopp. I mean, a lot of folks think cold calling isn't even a thing anymore. And Kevin's made his name as an absolute guru of the art and science of outbound cold calling. He's kind of on a mission almost to prove that it still works. He's helped countless sales professionals and businesses learn to profit from it big time and he's also a friend of the show kevin fantastic to have you with us today welcome aboard thank you for having me uh last time i was here we had a lot of fun and uh you got james here who uh i a joke i've been following him around all week i was on the the jb sales show earlier this week so uh looking forward to getting into the discussion yeah, got a great got a great crew going, and to round out the crew, we have with us Miro Putkinen, who is an AI tech expert. He's one of the co-founders of the artificial intelligence tech startup out of Finland called Epic Brief. And in, in addition to his knowledge of AI, uh, Miro's had some epic results in terms of his LinkedIn outreach. He's going to be sharing some of the insights he and his team have learned in the wake of all of that. Miro, welcome to the call today. Great to have you with us. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, guys. It's uh, it's really great to to be here with everyone. Um, I know all of you are in the U.S. I'm in I'm in southern Spain right now, a uh, completely different part of the world, but uh, we all speak the same language. We're all here to talk about sales, so I'm really excited to uh, get to know everyone and uh, and talk about uh, what's working. Right on. Well, and you are also part of the conversation, you who are listening right now in our live audience. Now, of course, we are customarily have a Q&A at the end of the show, but we'll do things just a little bit differently this time. If you want to, instead of uh, listing questions in the chat for the conversation, would you please share with us some of the things that are working for you when it comes to business development, sales, marketing, anything regarding a growing pipeline and winning new deals that's actually getting great results, would you put that in the chat? And we'll actually include that in the conversation, uh, probably throughout also differently from our normal uh, way of doing things on the show. We'll still have some Q&A time at the very end, uh, but go ahead and jump in. You're here. You're part of the panel as well. So guys, I want to kind of open it up a little bit as we get uh, jumping into things. We'll let our live audience start to put, post some of their ideas. Um, but maybe I could kind of kind of enter in a little bit backwards. Like maybe we could start by talking about some of the things that people don't think is, are working anymore. And um, maybe I'll ask you to kind of start off with an area that is not necessarily your expertise. We've had experts on in the past about it, and that is cold email or cold direct messaging on LinkedIn. So before we dive into your specific areas of expertise, let's get some general insights from you guys on that. Is that are these things that still have some legs, you know, yes, no, maybe so. What are your thoughts on that? Someone lead off. Okay. So my opinion, yes, I'm leading off. Uh, my opinion remains that these channels are probably the dominant channels. There are three that I feel are still effective and probably always will be to a degree. Email is one social touches are another and cold calling or cold, uh, cold DMS. These, these things work because it's how we connect in the modern age. It's how we use them that's changed considerably. So like some things that don't work, as you mentioned, the 
I hope you're, I hope all, all of you are, I hope this email finds you well. I hope this message finds you well. People bypass that. It's not valuable to them. And it kind of feels like, okay, here comes the pitch, right? We're super sensitive to being what I call pitch slapped. Nobody likes it. And when you say things like, uh, reach, I saw that you did X, Y, and Z. It's okay to have a good trigger for outreach. It's not okay to lead off with that trigger anymore because that's overused as an opening statement in your email and in your social game. So what's the move? The move is to take those things, write them out just as you would, and then read them out loud. Is this about you? Stop it. Go rewrite that in your email or your social touch and make it more about them. This is very difficult to do for sellers because we think we have to talk about us. That's just a quick note for those two channels i'll let kevin tackle the phone because he's the expert in the room <laughs> i love it yeah it's a great it's a great segue before we do that though i mean muro uh, when it comes to making it about us can ai help with that can i go to chat gpt plug in my uh my my email and say hey make this make this less about me or make this more about my my customer what do you think well unfortunately i'll give you the bad news unfortunately <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a bunch of studies that have found that um, that the, the top performing sellers, when they use AI, it actually improves their performance. But for underperforming sales reps, when they start mixing their underperformance with AI, it actually doesn't lead to good results. <laughs> so, so, so okay. this is like been studied by researchers who actually took like a group of sellers and then went and saw what AI would do. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you are seeing this, but I'm seeing this myself uh, as, a, as a founder and CEO of a startup. The cold outreach that I'm receiving is just, it's just terrible. Yeah. Um, I feel like AI could just make that terrible outreach just a little bit better. But I think if you really want to, um, you know, make an impact with uh, cold outreach and AI, You've got to use your brain a little bit. I think we've got some good advice already around like how to do that. But I think if you have a good framework and then you collaborate with AI, I think you can get some really good results that way. Well, it is kind of good news for those of us who are, uh, let's let's say, uh, sales geeks, right? We love to continue learning more about the art and the craft of selling is a skill that can continue, continually be honed and crafted. Uh, still a great investment. It's not like AI is going to come in and take over your job. Sounds like what you're saying, Miro, is you better have a good baseline and then it can make the better e even greater still. Well, what about the phone? I mean... I agree with Miro. I mean, half the phone calls I get are pretty daggum lame. We have probably one of the world's leading experts. Am I overstating it? Maybe. I don't know. He's, one, he's definitely, in my world, one of the best experts I personally know. So, Kevin, talk to us about the phone. Uh, why does it suck so much when people call me on my phone for a business purpose? And how, you know, how should we be changing that on our end of it? Well, you know, interesting we're going to talk about this. Look at, look at what showed up on my phone just like <laughs> a minute ago. <laughs> right so this is why phone is difficult right mm. google and apple are conspiring against everybody who's trying to reach people via phone and guess what ai bots are calling people left right, and that's telemarketer it, it even said the other day my phone rang and it said survey so i knew before i picked up the phone <laughs> don't pick up the phone it's a survey wow. how long until they like label it you know, B2B salesperson. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the game, the game with phone and with email, you know, to, to James's point, it all still works. You just got to do it the right way. Right? Authenticity. I, I could not agree, James, in saying that 99% of salespeople talk about me, 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 learn about all my stuff. And da, 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 it's the greatest. Uh, transformative. It's we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. And they're not talking enough about their prospects, but um, getting people to pick up the phone is harder than ever, right? So that mm. is something that is new. That's kind of where I say it's you're fighting an unfair battle if you're not using technology when it comes to phone, right? There, you mm. should be using technology. There, mm. There's somebody else in the room here. Ronin is in the room, and we had a great conversation about tone too. That's something that's definitely changed about the phone as a channel. Mm. Our confidence that we exude on the phone through our voice, the smile that people can hear on the other side of the phone, 
these are things that make an impact with that particular channel, a downward inflection. Do you have a minute before your next meeting? This mm. puts you in a position of authority. Shout out Chet Holmes, the ultimate sales machine. Rest in peace, Chet Holmes. Yes. Right? This, yeah. this type of nuance is what is changing on all channels. All channels are changing. You can no longer make a video for one guy named Jim and then run a report in Salesforce, first name equals Jim, and then send your video to all the gyms. That's something that is not working anymore. We must personalize. We must have some signal that I did this for you, my prospect. If we don't have that early and often, most of the time, it's going to get ignored. Not all the time. If you like those 1.2% reply rates, good for you. I'm searching for more like a 5 to 10% reply rate. That would yeah. be ideal given the volume that I'm sending out. So yeah. think about it from that perspective. Everything about every channel has shifted in a direction that says, is this for me? Or is this just garbage that's been sent to a thousand other people? Mm, yeah, right on. Well, so I'm kind of hearing things that are almost there's a tension between the two. So on the one hand, we want to leverage technology to get the best results. And yet there's authenticity, authenticity and individuality and even a level of skill that as of yet still requires human involvement to attain. How do we bring those two together, guys? Buy software. I <laughs> software wait where, where are all the, like, the, the, the outreach and sales loft bdrs that are like oh my god you, you gotta buy our stuff yeah yeah buy buy a software platform throw, throw that at it um i i think the the technical challenge of getting directly to somebody right landing in the main inbox getting a an executive to pick up their phone that is such a, a huge challenge that cannot be kind of understated that when you use technology, you're going to up the amount of times you can actually get in front of people. And uh, that authenticity piece doesn't really scale. Like it's really hard to do. So you need to be able to get as many of those chances as you can. So that's where I, I am a huge advocate for using technology. Like you got to be using technology if you really want to have some outbound um, in particular. Yeah particular now that i, I want to talk i want to ask miro this right i have been dreaming about a plug-in like i think this is coming i, I think it's very close because like if you think about where we're at in technological evolution open ai releases chat gpt and the whole world like explodes right and everyone's like oh my god it's like a human it does this does this but we're in the infancy of how we're using it to get things done yeah. in business or in you know, our, our daily lives and all this stuff. And I, I heard Mark Andreessen on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast the other day, phenomenal episode, Mark Andreessen, you know, legendary Silicon Valley VC mm. dude, the way I, I sat there and I was like, Oh shit. Like it's not going to take over, but it's going to make our job so much easier. Like the pull you around yeah, everywhere you're going as, as a sales and allow you to contextualize what you do and what your prospect does by in taking all that data and then plugging in like a very specific way to talk about it. And I'm like, mm. okay, cool. Cool. You still need a salesperson that does dots, but I think you don't need 20 salespeople. You don't need 20 BDRs. Right. You don't need 50. You need or three. So I don't know. Does that, does that plugin exist yet, Miro? Like we, we got to get chat GPT actually working to learn Here's my company. Here's the value. Here's our top five customer stories. How do I talk about this chat GPT and have it just spit it out? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not going to uh, pitch too much epic brief here. That's not why I'm here. But um, <laughs> I, I think I think from a technological landscape perspective, you're right. Like chat GPT is like a, a you know a Swiss Army knife for all sorts of use cases. What um, what we're trying to do in our business is to build a tool that leverages some of the good things, but is contextual to sales. Uh, we think about our tool and our, 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 like our, our roadmap is building like a companion for you. You know, uh, one of our engineers called it more like an intern, you know, that you can, uh, that follows you around or like, a, like an assistant, you know, that follows you around and helps you uh, in all of these little things, gets you ready for the call. Uh, make sure you execute uh, after the call and doing all these important little things that maybe you as a seller 
that take a lot of that energy that you have uh, from your performance, right? So um, I think you're going to see a lot of tools that uh, that are built for that. Con it's it's about data and building it contextually for sales. Um, and then uh, obviously they'll get better as people are using them. These models will improve for sp specifically for sales purposes. Um, but I'm excited because, you know, the reason why my co-founder and I started building uh, Epic Brief is because we were just two sales guys tired of doing all the manual work related to sales. Um, and we feel like, you know, AI can just take that away from us and we can just do what we love. Um, I think when people do what they love, they're so much better at what they actually do, right? So when they're Preach. when they're cold calling and you're not worrying about like all these other things, you're 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 going to be in your flow, and then you'll stay in your flow a lot longer. Because I remember yeah. when I was in SDR, if I could get into my flow, I then that's where I would hit. I would I would be converting because I'm in that flow yeah. state. Right, but. There's so many things that get you out of your flow. So I think that's what AI will do is just keep you in that, just like in that mode. Uh, and then I think you just deliver better results. I'm, I want to tack on here and say that I'm excited to move past generative AI. I think a lot of our early use cases are naturally generative. Write a 500 word article on XYZ. Um, tell me about this industry's struggles so I can write this effective email, right? Educate me. Uh, but when we start thinking about the way that we can leverage AI to be more intentional or mm -hmm. to streamline a process, I think it will become more of a companion to salespeople than it currently is. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the idea of something following me around, correcting me or telling me, no, don't do that. Do this instead. This is a better move. I think of things like lavender that are like picking up on stuff that could be improved upon in my emails, right? Uh, that stuff is really effective for salespeople. But AI is still reactive. We have to go to it and we have to do something with it for it to spit something back at us. I'm excited for when it jumps into the picture and says, hey, uh, and I'm thinking like sales loft's rhythm is like this, right? Hey, this thing took place. You should probably send this email. It looks kind of like this. Uh, also add this because they said this other thing, right? Telling salespeople what to do, why to do, how to do, when to do. That's the part that I think is more exciting for me. And I think will be more exciting for more frontline sales reps that are doing the job. To Kevin's point, a lot of companies right now are re recognizing the fact that we don't necessarily need 15 BDRs. We might need two. Uh, yes, Nick, I agree. I think Skynet freaks me out. And I think about ter the Terminator <laughs> movies just as much as you do, homie. But this is a necessary evil if we are to level up. It's, a, it's another avenue, another way to leverage something in the market that can help us get results. And if you are not focused on that as a salesperson or a marketer in 2023, you are missing the boat in 2024, yeah. I assure you. Right on. You. Well, I, I love that, the, the difference between being generative and being able to be more directive. That, that, that'd be, that'd be, that's a powerful transition that we have yet to see. But uh, hey, some of the cutting edge folks, like our friend Mutter on the call, are, are pushing the boundaries of that. So um, what else could we say about this uh, nexus between these amazing technologies that make some people nervous, but we all should start playing with it. I guess that's the one takeaway, right? Get involved, start playing with it, start experimenting. Um, what, what are some keys to get the most out of it? Now, I would, our, my, the best uh, e cold email expert that we could have had wasn't able to be here today. Uh, there are a lot of best practices that he shared on one of our previous episodes. Uh, Chris Lee Simi is an expert on outbound email and shared about having basically a burner domains you can use, get them well seasoned, and set the, send them out to very well segmented, highly targeted lists. That's all some good fundamentals, but that's got to be followed up with a really great phone technique and really great outbound technique that's all coordinated. So you've got a LinkedIn outreach going on primarily, good phone-based outreach to, to maximize that email-based outreach to get the most. Uh, this seems to be getting some great results. James, you talked about boosting it from low single digit to high single digit. Uh, and that th I think these would be some of the keys to put into place. What, how would you guys riff off of that? What else could we do to get more out of a, of a well-rounded effort like that? 
Um, when it comes to phone, especially Kevin, what would you say about? Because you, you know you can have a really a really well tuned CRM can probably flash up some of the good data that's in there. You better have your tech stack well tuned. Have some of these plugins right. What else would you say about it? We talked about tonality. Maybe give us a little mini give us a little mini course on that. Then following up on a really well targeted list with a good well well designed email campaign. You know, it's segmented, targeted. We got some responses. Take us to the next steps on the telephone. Sure. And it's interesting because this is actually where this is actually where I get a lot of my work, right? So I'm, I'm a solo consultant these days, running my own business, Hop Consulting Group. And I am currently working with two businesses where they've kind of nailed email. They're doing really well there. But they realize that, you know, the SDR leader, they have SDR leaders, the SDR leader that was really good at identifying, you know, how to build the email process, what tool to bring in, how to build these segmented lists, loves getting into the A-B testing and does all like the, like, a, it's kind of like two brain, I would argue, if you're going to do like cold email or you're going to do cold calling really well, like I, way more of the talk to talk, you got to talk to talk. And if you don't know how to talk to talk, there's nowhere to hide, right? When you talk about tone with cold e email, a lot, a lot, a lot about being very scientific. You know, what's the the word's not nerdy, but like I want to say nerdy. Like cold email nerd type dudes are, are very, very different personality types than cold call type dudes, right? And it, I, I, I find it's really interesting because I have people coming to me that have, they have these humming systems that are using some sort of AI or they're, or they're just doing jobs with email. But with phone, teaching a rep how to talk about what you do, the business challenges and the valuable solutions is still an art form as much as it is a science, right? Something that as like, I, and people have asked me, like I, I have people, you know, in my personal life, like, like, yeah, I mean, isn't like AI going to replace salespeople? Like, why do we need a salesperson? Like, just have an AI bot, like go out and talk to people. And I'm like, Look, I don't, I don't see it. And as like a guy who's big on LinkedIn and in like the cold calling world, I've had uh, four or five different companies come to me in the last three, four months saying, Hey, I have a AI cold calling bot. It'll, it'll replace cold callers. I want your feedback on it. I want you, I want, I want to work with you on it. And I, one time listening to it, I'm like, it's good, but down calls. It's not going to be good for outbound because that litmus test, the bullshit filter is not changing. It's getting harder and harder. The bullshit filter for every executive out there is getting tighter and tighter and tighter because yeah. if you manage to get past the telemarketer thing and the spam call, then you get into their ear. We're still, as humans, we're still so sick that we're getting pitched left, right, and sideways on everything that an AI bot's not going to execute a cold call for a long time. And, and if you're listening, sitting out there and you're like you're wrong kevin let's put it to the test you know I, I cold call live every other week on the internet let's put your cold call bot live on the internet and see how it does like it's just it, it'll be really i think it will replace call center functions yeah because if someone's calling inbound or if someone called in and requested something and you just need to call them and schedule something that should be die but b2b cold call what does that sound like though kev what does that sound like hi you filled out a form I'm no, calling dude, James. to get it, you to the yeah, next step. Yeah. It sounds good. It sounds good. I will give it to him, right? I, I, no, I know it sounds better than that. I'm just saying, that. like, it's like, hey, yeah. my I, I feel like when I get a call and I think that it's a bot, I start saying their name. I'm like, George. Yeah. George. Right. George. And if they're still talking and they don't stop, that's right. a bot, dude. I know. <laughs> I know. But the, these bots can, like, stop. It's not a recording, it's an actual reflexive bot. So right. it sounds really good. It's just, would any executive have time to actually go through that and book a discovery for software they've never heard of? Uh, no, no, no. It needs to be that no. human element, right? Yeah. So and, and it's not going away. I want to talk to Andrew Ellenberg. Andrew Ellenberg said, I wanted to fill out my Salesforce for me. You're already behind, homie. Uh, check out win.ai, W-I-N-N dot A-I, or attention.tech. Both of those have that capability, along with many others, like taking notes and adding it to your CRM and then automatically putting out a potential follow-up template for you based on those notes in your CRM. That's nice. money in the bank, dude. Like, 
Try those things out. These are all things you can try and see if they improve your efficiency, your time management, and your results. And tracking and measuring. Uh, Miro, I, um, or, I have to get your opinion because you're the AI expert in the room. Attribution, tracking and measuring, and tying dollars to tech is the only thing that these leaders should be focused on when it comes to whether or not something is worth the investment and adding it to my tech stack. No? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, there it is. You heard okay, it from the yeah, expert. Yeah. I'm right. I'm right. You know, I, I think it's a great point. Yeah. If you, if you want to riff on that, Miro, that, yeah, yeah. What else? What can be, what can be more concise than that? Right. That that's where the focus belongs for sure. Yeah. I was, I wanted to make a point on the cold calling piece because I, it's uh, one of my passions myself uh, that, um, <laughs> there's a lot of humans that are worse than I think are going to be a lot worse than the bots uh, where you're saying <laughs> like George uh, and it's actually a George and and I've experienced I don't know if you guys have experienced this but someone cold calls you and you're trying to interrupt them and they're just they just keep going <laughs> and yeah. and it's oh. for me like one of the things that I've I've always when I've been training at my own SDRs is I tell them uh, what I my principle at least is I need you to think. I, I really want you to be able to think independently. And especially the way I, you know, I think leaders can train this, but I, the way I've trained this is uh, to teach them how to think under pressure is is like, it's like when you're, you know, I'm, I'm from Finland. My wife is American, so I understand a little bit um, American football uh, that you guys love, I'm sure. Uh -huh. um, you know, how do you call an audible? You know, you need to understand how to, how to, how to uh, behave under pressure. And one of the things I used to do with my SDRs is I, I, I take them on the walk. And the, one of the walks was I would walk with them through the streets, cars are coming. I would go up the escalators and I'd be like, give me the pitch. And if they would fail, I'd like, let's go again. And it, it's all about what you guys are talking about, the tone. Like I would just be listening out. I think what sales leaders can do is they can listen. They should have a sense of what the right tone is. And you just need to just make them repeat it until the tone is there. It's, there are some simple things like nailing your value proposition and so forth, but getting that tone right and listening to another human, because I think like ultimately the, 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 the difference between AI and set, like human salespeople is, is our emotional intelligence. Uh, like mm -hmm. how are we using that? How are we uh, improving that in our, in our salespeople is um, that's what it's about. And, Understanding what is here, being human is about thinking, not just being a bot and doing rote, rote For sure. things. How do we teach right. people to think is a is a challenge. Yeah, Miro. I so I, I call think, that you you give your team an edge, wouldn't it? Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. I, I was just gonna say. So I, I have an online course that talks about cold calling, and you know, there's so much about cold. You can write down and put in a course and say like, look, you should be doing this X Y Z. It's like a setup. But then once you get on the phone, one of the concepts I talk about a lot is called the X factor. It's exactly what you're talking about, Mira. It's like this, it's that added piece. It's the art form inside of the science of like outbound sales being a scientific process. That art form, the ability to call an audible, the ability to talk about like you're listening, you, you call somebody and you hear, hey, yeah, this is Kevin. And you hear that, that low shh, shh, there. Hey, sounds like I caught you in the car. Are you are you going through Mickey D's? Can I get that uh, the new grimace shake? Can you give me one of those? <laughs> no cold call script ever is going to have that in there. But I promise you, if right. you drop that line right. next time you hear someone's on the car, they're going to say, <laughs> "No, no, I, I I'm vegan. I'm not going to McDonald's. But what, what, why are you calling me?" <laughs> and all of a sudden, we're two humans talking to each other, right? They're you, and then they're going to give you an honest answer because they trust that you're a real person, right? Uh, that, that's going to be really, really, really hard. I don't know if AI will ever replace the pie, right? Yeah. Uh, go ahead, James. Get, uh, I think there's an issue on your mind. Yeah. Hashtag you're muted. Uh, this authenticity that Kevin is describing translates the same hmm. in your emails and in your social touches and in your yeah. videos and in your marketing collateral. The things that you put out there most of the time when I talk to salespeople that want to use content or they want to create some level of digital footprint so that they can have this inbound, this influx of strangers to talk to. Make no mistake, y'all. We're in sales. The job right. is to talk to strangers. 
It goes against everything that we think that we know, because when we're little, our parents teach us, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> don't get in the van, whatever you do. And then we grow up and we become salespeople. What's the job? Talk to strangers. Don't just talk to them. Get in the van for the candy and the puppies, <laughs> right? This is like something we have to get used to because it's where it goes against everything that we know. So when we put messages out there that portray some level of vulnerability, authenticity, um, genuine curiosity, as John Barrows would say, um, uh, show me that you know me, hashtag Sam sales. Can't say that without thinking mm -hmm. about Sam McKenna, right? These types of touches are more meaningful than the scanned inbox. I can clearly see this is automated. I can clearly see this is a template. This is no personalization. Anybody that's not putting somebody's name in the preview of an email, you're, it's just, hey, or hi there. Yeah. Stop this immediately. It does not take long. For you to add the name use the merge field from your crm if you need to and you're doing templates but if your emails begin with hey there you are a dinosaur stop this madness immediately <laughs> right and start thinking about what can i say that this person is going to scan their email their inbox either in the morning or after lunch because that's when we do it we're humans right we scan the inbox and i want them to see it and think that that was written for mm -hmm. me i should probably read that if you're not thinking this way you have an issue, I assure you. And go join Kevin next Tuesday for that. Uh, Kevin is an expert cold call. It's so amazing to hear him do the Yeah, thing. no, legit, <laughs> just so you're clear on what that is. I mean, this is Kevin on camera making cold calls that are legit cold calls for you to watch. Yeah. So the good, it's, the, good yeah. the bad, the ugly. It's I love it, man. It's, I, it's a lot of fun. It's hard. So there's get, I've, I've gone to I've, – I've been in the DMs and uh, to a number of people who are cold calling experts. And I'm like, hey, like, uh, uh, I can't. I'm like, ah, <laughs> right, Kevin, I'll I'm do in. it with you. That's what I'm talking I'm about. In. I love it. Let's do it. James, love that. Kevin, I'll, I'll do it with you. Let's I do it. Think it's a, I think it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a game, right? Yeah. It, it's like going to the oh, fair and you're trying to get the stuffed animal for your kid. It's fun, right? That's how you have to look at I think it almost. It's fun. I think it's fun. Yeah. But I'm a sicko. Right? People, so I, I, because oh, this is, this is relevant to what we're talking about. I had a, I thought, I'm a, yeah, there, there was a. I had a second call today with a, an opportunity, a consulting opportunity, and the, I, I, my new thing that I'm talking about a lot is called calling culture, right? I, I had to sit down and think like, like you know, what is not going to get replaced by AI? What does it want their team to have because they know that cold calling is not dead? They need to keep doing it, but it's getting harder. It's called I'm I'm calling calling culture, like this idea that like, hey, like we can do it. We're going to do it, do it. I'll give you the tools to do it. But like, it's a cultural movement inside of a company. In this second call today with a prospective customer, mm -hmm. the CRO says, you know, I, I think we have calling culture. The reps make the calls. I was here. <laughs> like the, look at the, the look at the, the dashboard says they're making calls. I don't understand what you mean by calling culture. And I said, calling culture means that your reps are super excited to make those calls, right? You, you didn't reach out to me because it's like, going really well and everything is like you know you're nailing it you're converting right he's building his it's a cro is building his math on you know one meeting set per week per sdr and they're doing click the dial click the call i'm like i, I can just plug in two or three things here to make this 10x more efficient and drive this cultural thing like the reason you should ai in your quotes which is the ai tools are mostly what i recommend for cold calling um, that help you get into calls faster, to be clear, not that make yeah. calls for you into live conversations faster. But um, the reason I recommend you use these is not just to go faster and to have more conversations, but also what we had talked about earlier here is you start building a better work day. Your, your reps are talking to more people and they're leveraging technology and they actually like their job more. So mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it does tie into what um, Mark Andreessen was saying on JRE, and I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but basically he laughs at Joe because Joe's all paranoid about AI. He says, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a computer. It's not going to be sentient. You think it's sentient because it's doing human-like things. It's deducing things from knowledge, but it still is not human, and it won't be human. Uh, it's going to be the greatest tool that we've ever had. It's going to transform the way people work. And I think that 
that is what sales leaders need to start thinking about is not how can I replace salespeople with AI? Sure, you're going to need a little bit less salespeople for sure. But how can we use this tool to make uh, the jobs better, make someone's job better? And that's invaluable. Love it. Love it. Let's, I got, I'm curious about Miro's opinion on that, yeah. right? The AI expert in the room, you got to know, like, it's a, you built a tool that legit is designed to be that, that yeah. helpful hint, that helpful assistant. Yeah, so, so we, we look at um, the future of AI and sales like a ladder. So the first um, step in the ladder is automation. So, uh, you know, you talked about tools like Win or Attention. Uh, these are tools and when we're doing that, like as a baseline of our tool is like automating CRM fields, you know, doing, doing those admin tasks, um, automating that. That's that's the first ladder. The second ladder is um, needs analysis, understanding customer needs, um, using that data to build playbooks. Um, if you've ever tried to build a playbook, uh, it you know, you build a playbook, you spend months and as soon as you release it, it's already uh, not usable by the reps because the market moves and you look at the playbook and it's it, it's just not relevant anymore. So, you know, automating like needs analysis and getting that into a playbook and creating live playbooks is a really, really interesting thing and use case. Um, so, so we go automation needs analysis. Uh, the third level uh, is problem solving. So you want to use AI in problem solving. So solving customers problems uh, and collaborating with AI and, and, and then the fourth ladder is a strategic thinking. So what we've noticed, you know, playing with tools like ChatGPT is that you can use them for problem solving, um, use them for um, strategic thinking. Uh, you can ask it very complex questions like, you know, build me a, a value framework. This is a very strategic sales tool to understand like, from feature set all the way to the customer's strategic goals and objectives. How do you drive that conversation up the chain uh, of the buyer um, hierarchy and building a value framework? You can ask it to build you tables and matrix tables and do very complex strategic thinking that would take a lot of time for, for, for sellers and, and those that are doing strategy. The fifth level, which we don't believe that AI can touch because it's not conscious, is the fifth level, which is emotional, uh, the emotional uh, part of sales. And so, you know, it's really interesting that we're talking about like authenticity and all these parts. These are the things that we need to focus on. Like if you had a strategy for your sales career for the next 10 years, it would be get better at the emotional part because AI is going to help you in everything else but the emotional part. But the emotional part of sales is the one that is the hardest because one of my sales trainers once upon a time talked about sales being like a, like a mirror um, that, that always looks at you. You know, when you're picking up the phone, it's like a mirror that reflects you and you can choose to look at the mirror or not to look at the mirror, but the mirror is always there and it forces you to confront very tough emotional questions about yourself. So the authenticity in cold calls is coming or lack thereof is coming from something deeper from within that um, you're, you're not confronting your fears of cold calling. So you're creating a mask that you're using to cold call. And that's what it sounds like. It's like a, your prospecting voice. But you got to do some deep uh, emotional work to be more emotionally attuned and do some of and, and then leverage the humanness in, in, in all aspects of sales. Because everything else start, can, will ultimately get automated. Hmm. Let, let's start talking about childhood trauma. This is this is important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I actually think childhood drama trauma plays yes. a massive role. I yeah. have these conversations with frontline sales reps that are so concerned with their career long term, they don't see the job that they have to do in front of them. So I have to stop them and ask them questions that they have no idea are even related to their success levels. I'll say something like, hey, quick question. Uh, are you an only child? And they're like, what? <laughs> and you have to explain to them, well, the reason that you've been here for four months and you think that you should be an account executive already and you're currently an SDR is because you're an only child and you've spent your entire life with two people that only care about how you benefit from every situation ever. You've never had to wait your turn. It doesn't happen for you. 
So you believe that you started as an SDR four or five months ago and you're not an account executive yet. And that just pisses you off. But people with siblings have spent their entire life waiting for their turn, taking hand-me-downs, right? Like it's a different mentality. Another question I have to ask, are both of your parents hmm. still alive? Ooh. And they're like, I don't understand what this has to do with my career. It has everything to do with your career. You're so focused on that. You're not focused on the job at hand. And that's because you haven't had the volume turned down on that importance yet. When you lose a parent or a child, suddenly everything comes into focus. And you realize that the job isn't who I am. I'm made up of all these other things too that also matter. So you're focused on that growth and that promotion and that upward mobility so hard too soon because your level of loss or trauma or drama in your life has not adjusted that view for you. There are other things that are more important, like getting to the quota that you were given at the beginning of the year. If you think you're going to get promoted without that piece, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's some, that's some good stuff and very current, right? I mean, we, I think one of the things that maybe is a really good trend is folks are getting a little bit more aware of what it means to function well from a mental standpoint, emotional health, and uh, channeling some of the, those issues in a positive direction. So I love that. I mean, to be effective as sales leaders, it'd be well if we're, we, you know, maybe flex, not flex, excuse me, but try to grow some skills in that area, inform ourselves, maybe even look at including team members specifically for that. I love that, James. Well, you will never grow professionally until you're willing yeah, to grow love personally. It. I love it. And we're not talking about hoo-ha personal growth stuff and making goals and stuff like that. We're talking about the real, the real deal, man. Yeah. Real Drop fucking it. talk. Ooh. Yeah. Right Probably. on. Right on. It's okay. It's not It's not a family show. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's for play as. Well, 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 earmuffs. Well, guys, we can keep going. I mean, we've, we've already we've dropped a lot of golden nuggets. Uh, what a great team play this has been. Muto, we're going to have to have you and maybe Anton back again to share about your viral LinkedIn campaign. That could be a topic all, all its own, maybe on a future episode. But, uh, Kevin, before you go, man, you already dropped the link for your show every other week. How else could we uh, put you out there for folks to learn more about what you bring, brother? Uh, mostly just LinkedIn. I have this uh, personal website kind of like an OnlyFans girl has a link tree. I've got a professional version of it right here where you can find links to, to try out a bunch of different AI type tools for free. You can find ways to connect with me. You can find my online course. You can find uh, a lot of different things at my personal website there, solo.to slash hop or connect with me on LinkedIn. It's a great way of doing it. Thank you so much for uh, having me on the show today. It's been really, really fun. Um, and uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Kevin, you rock, man. We'll see you soon. Yeah, take care. Thanks for being on. Cheers. Cheers. And James, my brother, you are also, as always, you've been a rock star once again. Uh, how can folks go a little deeper with you? I know you're still working with uh, Mr. Barrows. Uh, you're doing, you got your own thing going on. You're a That's podcaster. Right. Man, you got too many things going on. What, what do you want to talk about here? No, you can never have too much going on. I am excited to run full sprint at Sell Better. This is the daily sales show. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop the link in the chat so that everyone can go and look at the ones that are coming up that are relevant to you. We cover everything from prospecting to closing to customer success to sales leadership and career development down to like the nitty gritties, cold emails, calls to action, subject lines. We do all kinds of stuff on the show. The first link that I put in, though, the one that says free resources, everyone that's here right now that catches this, go get those because there are guides in there, templates in there, actual like. CTAs that generate response. So those are all free resources along with Devin Reed's course, Jed Marley's course, and Jason Bay's cold calling course. There are some great resources in there that you guys can take advantage of. And I want you to have them as a thank you for having me on the show and being James, such a great you audience. rock brother. Thanks for being here and bringing so much value. I'm going to go get mine. That's for sure. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, James. Thanks again for being here, man. Talk to you soon guys. Right, have a we'll great one. Thanks again. Hey, Muto, it's been a great conversation with you too, friend. You've got a, a lot of expertise, obviously, in this very uh, obviously exciting and kind of cutting edge and still developing area of artificial intelligence. It must be exciting for you to be right on the forefront of that. Thanks for being here to share. Uh, how can folks go next level with you? You've already got thousands of people, I guess, in your waiting list. Can people still go and check out epicbrief.com and join the cohort? Is that the best plan? Yeah, yeah. Please do that. Um, also follow my co-founder, Anton Dobrazansky. He's posting every day. Um, 
so he's a great great one to follow um yeah and if you if anybody wants to have a chat about ai and sales and and what you guys are already doing and, and testing and playing around with um yeah this is uh i'm a bit down the rabbit hole fit maybe further down the rabbit hole than others but <laughs> others are falling in so come and chat with me let's talk let's uh Let's build this. This is a completely new opportunity for all of us, and, and we're learning, and would love to learn from from everyone else. So, uh, please uh, hit me up on on LinkedIn, and uh, let's connect. I love it. We'll keep the conversation going with you. But thanks once again for being with us, Muto. Take care. Have a great weekend. Thank you. And for all of you listeners, thanks for making the show such a great success. What a fun ride it's been, and I get to be here in this chair learning from so many wonderful people like the panel we had here today. And it's wonderful to have you guys and gals in our audience as well. If you're enjoying the content, want to check out past episodes, don't forget, you can go check out the podcast wherever you like to go get your podcast, whether that's on Apple iTunes, whether that's on Google or Spotify. Uh, a lot of great previous insights in areas such as how to do expert cold email, how, things we didn't even get to today, such as how to do effective SEO, paid advertising, everything related to marketing and sales B2B. It's right here on the Evolve Sales Leader. Go download some episodes and uh, amp up your workout time, your drive time, or what have you. And as always, we're powered by Overpass.com. What a great solution they are for whether you need virtual assistants, SDRs, BDRs, full cycle sales professionals at an amazing level of talent at an amazingly affordable cost. Check them out. It's free for hiring managers to start your account at Overpass.com. Pop it open. Pop in a job post, super, super easy to do. AI will guide you. And that same AI will send you like 20 great profiles to check out, see their CVs, listen to voice samples, and ask them to come to an interview. You also get an account executive for free to help you narrow your focus and find the perfect set of one, two, three, five, or 10 new additions to your business development or support team. Check them out at overpass.com. Well, as I mentioned, it's a pleasure to be here as your host, so I'm going to sign off at this point. We're going to see you the same time, same station next week. Make it a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.